GPUs are finally getting cheaper, which means it's time to feast on inexpensive compute before this cycle ramps back up again. Let's discuss 10 of the best GPUs to look out for in November of 2022. The first card we'll be discussing and number 10 on the list, also probably the cheapest, is the GTX 1070. This card right now is a budget champ that delivers incredible 1080p performance for around the $150 mark. I had a 1070 for a while, and I actually have a review on the channel if you're interested and want to check out how it performs. For the money, you get a decently powerful cut down GP104 die featuring 1920 FP32 or IN32 CUDA cores, 120 TMUs, and 64 rasterization operation pipelines. The texture and raster engines are beyond fast enough to render 1080p scenes at 60 FPS and beyond. This core, combined with 8GB of 8GB per second GDDR5 on a 256-bit bus, ensures that you won't run into any VRAM issues at the targeted resolution. You won't be playing at 4K on this card, but to throw together a build that's competent when it comes to game, or you want to build your first gaming PC, then the 1070 is an awesome start. Number 9 on the list is the RTX 2070 Super. Coming in at between $240 to $300 used, this GPU will provide you with excellent 1080 and 1440p performance, as well as some light 4K gaming if you're conservative with your settings. Featuring a cut down 12 nanometer TU104 die, this GPU has 2560 FP32 and INT32 capable CUDA cores, 160 texture mapping units, and 64 ROPs. This translates to a card that, while not spec'd as well as the 1080 Ti, is competitive with said card because of Turing's IPC gains over Pascal. Along with the decent compute performance, this card utilizes 8GB of 14GB per second GDDR6 on a 256 bit bus which while not superb, is beyond adequate to feed the onboard GPU. With a TDP of 215 watts, this card also isn't as power hungry as some of the Ampere cards, and is usually smaller than 2080s or even 3070s, meaning it'll fit into more cases. Keep an eye out for the 2070 Super, because its competitive performance with the 1080 Ti and Titan X Pascal make it an awesome card. The number 8 spot goes to the Instant Classic, the RX 6600 XT. Coming in at between $230 to $290, the GPU provides similar 1080p performance to the previously mentioned 2070 Super. However, the much slimmer memory bus holds it back much more at 1440p and 4K. Built on the fully unlocked 7 nanometer Navi 23 die, this card features 2048 stream processors, 128 TMUs and 64 ROPs paired with a 128-bit GDDR6 memory controller clocked at 16 gigabit per second. With 256 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth and over 10.5 teraflops of FP32, this card rivals the PS5 in raw performance, but is held back immensely by the very slim memory interface. To minimize these effects, AMD utilized a large level 3 cache, with 32 megabytes being present on this card. For 1080p gaming, this card will absolutely monster games at medium to high settings, but at 1440p and 4K, I would recommend going with another card. In terms of power, this card has a TDP of 160 watts, meaning most power supplies built over the past 5 or so years can run this card comfortably. There are plenty of models available on used sites such as eBay as well, so if you wanted a more premium build, then those are also available, at a higher price of course. However, if you don't really care that much about ray tracing, then the next card on our list might be able to scratch your itch for a similar price. The number 7 spot on this list is an obligatory inclusion, even though the DirectX 12 performance can be a bit lacking in some titles. The GTX 1080 Ti was the beast from 2017 that is still relevant over 5 years after release. Coming in anywhere between $250 to $300, this GPU offers incredible 1080 and 1440p performance, and can still tackle plenty of modern games at 4K. I have a review on the channel of the Titan X Pascal, which while being a Titan model, shares the same core specifications with the 1080 Ti, making the cards perform almost identically. From what I experienced, both the cards are still very capable. And while they don't support new features such as DLSS or AI tensor acceleration, for regular ray tracing algorithms and something like, I don't know, Blender, this card is still capable of running them, albeit with lower performance. 
With a TDP of 250 watts, this card is able to fit into most systems, albeit you may need at least a 600 watt PSU. But the power requirements aren't ridiculously high, and the FP32 performance it provides is strong enough to power some games in almost all resolutions. Number 6 goes to the RTX 2080. Technically speaking, this GPU performs only about 7% better on average over the previously mentioned 2070 Super. This card though, coming in at between $270 to $330, is on average less expensive than the 3060 Ti and performs more closely to that card over the 2070 Super. Rocking a slightly cut down TU-104 die, this card features 2,944 FP32 and INT32 capable CUDA cores, 184 TMUs and 64 ROPs, along with a 256-bit GDDR6 memory interface clocked at 14 gigabit per second. This card also features a 215 watt TDP, making it more efficient than some of the other cards on this list, but it's not as power conservative as something like a Pascal GPU. This also brings up the 2080 Ti as that card offers quite a bit more power in terms of RT and rasterization performance. For the price the Ti model is going for, I would rather pick up a base 3070. It'll on average perform better in ray tracing, and features a significant amount of extra FP32 CUDA cores, making it faster in programs that can utilize the extra floating point power. As for the base 2080, the card will offer exceptional 1440p and moderate 4K gaming, as long as you're somewhat smart with your settings usage. The 2080 would be a nice starting point for a PC where you need lots of power on hand for gaming or other productivity applications, such as AutoCAD or Blender. Coming in at the number 5 spot is a card I never would have thought would be considered budget. The GTX 1080 was the graphics card in my main rig from mid 2019 up until about a year ago, and I can say that for 1080 and 1440p gaming it absolutely kicks ass. Coming in at between $140 to $180, you get a former Pascal flagship GPU that, while not 4K ready anymore, still packs a powerful punch. Featuring a fully unlocked GP104 die, this card has 2,560 FP32 or INT32 CUDA cores, 160 texture mapping units, and 64 rasterization operation pipelines. The memory interface is a 256-bit GDDR5X controller running at 10 gigabit per second. Speaking from experience, the memory chips can be overclocked a little on this card, which may help extend its life ever so slightly, but in the end, it's a last-gen standard, and just outright isn't as fast as the newer GDDR6 and its X-branded brother GDDR6X. It's also relatively power-efficient. With a very manageable 180-watt TDP, the card will fit into most systems, with NVIDIA themselves recommending at least a 450-watt PSU. I can say from experience that this card is an absolute blast. The number 4 spot goes to a card that isn't as popular as its prior gen analog, but is still a great way to get into RTX functionality. The RTX 2066GB, coming in at between $180 to $220, offers a cut down 12 nanometer TU-106 GPU that, while sounding kind of anemic, offers RTX 3050 killing performance. With a spec 1920 in 32 on FP32 CUDA cores, 120 texture mapping units and 48 ROPs, this 160 watt card is targeted at 1080p gameplay, but is also capable of some light 1440p. The core is paired with a 192 bit, 14 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory controller, so its bandwidth will be limited when you turn the resolution up. But if you're fine with sticking to lower resolutions, then you shouldn't really run into issues. What attracts me to this particular card is the fact that it actually outperforms an RTX 3050 and is cheaper by anywhere between $20 to $50. This card is a bit on the expensive side for what you get, but if you want to get great 1080p performance and the latest features, it's hard to beat. Coming in at the number 3 spot is going to be a tough sell for a lot of people, but its performance more than makes up for it. The AMD Radeon RX 6800 is an RTX 3070 Ti competitor that actually beats it in a lot of gaming scenarios. With a price tag of between $430 to $500, this card comes in at a similar price to the 3070 Ti, but offers double the VRAM and superior performance at 1080 and 1440p. Featuring a 7 nanometer cut down Navi 21 GPU die, with 3840 stream processors, 240 texture mapping units, and 96 ROPs, the card has the raw horsepower to tear through games at 1080 and 1440p. The memory bus on this card, though, is only 256 bits, and is clocked at 16 gigabit per second. 
So while it's competitive with the 3070 Ti in terms of width, it falls behind in bandwidth, but maintains a strong lead due to having double the video memory. The TDP on this card is also slightly more reasonable than the 3070 Ti, coming in at 250 watts, and a suggested PSU of 600 watts. Now one thing I will say speaking from experience, that Nvidia offers CUDA, so if you're a programmer looking for a GPU to offload some of your math onto, then CUDA is going to be far and away the easier choice over OpenCL. Up next in the number 2 spot is going to be a classic for at least the next few years. The RTX 3060 Ti, while it was incredibly expensive only 9 months ago, has plummeted in price to around the $290 to $330 mark as of early November 2022. This is impressive because the card is based on a cut down 8 nanometer GA104 die, which is the same silicon that goes into the 3070 and 3070 Ti. As a result, this card performs more like a 70 class card, leaving a huge gap in performance between it and the base 3060. Clocking in with 4864 FP32 CUDA cores, 152 texture mapping units, and 80 ROPs, this card has over a thousand more cores than the base non-TI model, and a larger 256-bit memory interface. This means the 3060 Ti has more memory bandwidth, but less overall memory than the 12GB base model. The GPU was able to be saturated with more data as memory bandwidth increases, though the 14 gigabit per second memory modules could also be tweaked with to increase core bandwidth even further over the base 3060. With a TDP of 200 watts, it's technically more efficient than the competing 6700 XT, but in real world use cases they draw similar amounts of power. This card is a competitor with our next pick, but in terms of Nvidia GPUs it's hard to beat the value of this card when buying used. Coming in at the number one spot is the AMD RX 6700 XT a 12GB graphics card coming in at around the $300 mark. For the price you pay, you get a GPU that's on average slightly faster than the 3060 Ti while cutting out the tensor cores. Featuring the 7 nanometer Navi22 GPU die, the card features 2560 FP32 stream processors, 160 TMUs, and 64 ROPs. You also get a 16 gigabit per second 192-bit GDDR6 memory controller as well as 96 megabytes of L3 cache. The memory subsystem, while more narrow than NVIDIA solutions, is partially made up for by the enormous caches on die. For gaming though, this card can tackle 1080 and 1440p with ease. However, when turning the resolution up to 4K, it averages roughly 8% slower than the 2080 Ti, which it on average beats at lower resolutions. The price to performance ratio on this card is similar to the 3060 Ti, so it's really a good competitor for that card over the more powerful and more expensive 3070. With a 230 watt TDP, this card draws slightly more power than the 3060 Ti, however you get more VRAM for the price, making it stronger in situations where memory usage is high. For things like gaming, this won't really be too beneficial, as you'll tap out the GPU before you utilize all 12 gigabytes. but for something like image processing where you're storing big arrays of pixel data, it allows you to keep more items in memory, rather than pinging back and forth between your system's DDR4 and the G6 on the card. The 6700 XT overall seems to be a 3060 Ti competitor for less money, which makes it a stronger buy in my personal opinion. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know which GPU you currently have or are looking at getting your hands on. I'm legitimately curious just to see what people are looking for, and from what I'm guessing the 3060 Ti is going to probably be the most popular. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.